Hey out there everyone, this is Johnny with Anglers All. We're out here on one of our favorite floats. Last night we were fishing, caught a couple fish on drunken disorderlies. Yeah, see, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice work, Johnny. Nice. So we thought we needed a couple more for the box today, so we're gonna tie some up for you. Cold morning, so forgive me if I'm warming up my hands, but let's get it going. All right, everyone, this is a uh, B10S number four for the trailer hook. Doing the flash in black. You want to pull off quite a bit of strands for this. Strip back this polar chenille as you're making wraps forward. It doesn't have to be perfect. Olive zonker strip. This is a good trick for mallard flank feathers though. If you want to flatten it out, it'll help you tie it in a little better. And this is super important on this fly. This flank feather needs to run right down the shank of the hook. So you want to definitely take your time in getting this tied in in the right spot. And if you make a couple loose wraps up front, you can kind of manipulate the feather into the position you need it. Yeah, if the rear of this isn't um, tied properly, you won't get the right action on the trailing hook. Those are just hitches to finish. And then everyone this B10S number two for the front hook. This is another little tip. I'll take the wire bite, kind of mash on it a little bit. That gives kind of some bite to make sure it's not coming out of there and I'm also gonna glue it.
Now one of the keys to this is you can't, you gotta make sure you leave space up here because we have to make uh, three stacks of gear here. So you can see I've left a good solid gap to the eye there. Flank feathers are going to be on the sides, so you want these to match up. You're going to even the tips out together. I kind of just prep these both at the same time to get them ready. And these ones are going to run right down the side of the shank, so where the trailer was on top, this is directly on the sides. And again, if you do these kind of loose, you can manipulate the feather into place a little bit. Flash is going to get tied right on top between those two flanks. If you keep a hold of these tips when you're tying the deer head and push the top down with your thumb, that'll spread the collar kind of around the sides of the fly too. That's a good tip. So that first one I kind of held on to, this one it's actually going to spin. And then the next stack I'll also spin. Two loose wraps and then pull straight down. You can see it spin there. And then I'm now putting on pretty good pressure.
So that's the tricky part done. I like to comb all this forward here a little bit. Get another one. Now the key to this is being super delicate because you can definitely put a lot of work into a big fly and ruin it by over trimming the head or making an improper cut. So I'm kind of placing this blade in on the eye and following that angle and just lightly cutting into the hair. And it's better to under trim it up front because then you can still kind of chew away to make the head exactly what you want. So I start on the bottom, and then I move to the top. We're gonna trim out the sides. And you can kind of make this wedge as big as you want, but you kind of want to match the wedge head that you're cutting to the size of the streamer you're tying. This is kind of, I think, the most important part of the fly is you have that bent hook and you're almost creating, um, you know, I think Tommy Lynch's uh, design without ever meeting the guy, but shout out to Tommy for the fly, is that it's um, like a bill of a shad wrapper of Rapala. It's pushing a lot of water, so as you strip it, it's going to dart in different directions due to the wedge head. Not bad, I'm happy with it. For being a breakfast, breakfast fly. Let's go fish. Troll. <laughs> you know that one? Got him on the what? Drug disorder.